About a year ago, we made a special video where we strayed away from scientific discourse to jump into buck-wild COVID conspiracy theories to set the record straight on a number of them. We've talked about 5G networks, David Icke and Bill Gates too. It was a wild video. In fact, it was so wild that I had to turn off the comment section as it went out of control. Day by day, I got a lot of accusations starting from me being Bill Gates' nephew to being paid by Big Pharma to one where my supposed goal was to put 5G into everyone. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. So recently, as the so-called lab leak hypothesis got some steam, people were pointing at it as a victory of, let's say, alternative facts over real ones. So in this video, I want to dive deeper into where COVID-19 truly came from and the credibility of the scientific community. I'm Dr. Bertala Meshko, and you're watching The Medical Futurist. Soon after we heard about the outbreak in Wuhan, we heard about the vet market too. COVID-19 was supposed to be a virus jumping from bats to other animals, most likely a pangolin, which came into contact with a human at the market who got infected by it. And we all know the rest. Why was that the main narrative at the time? Because Chinese researchers published about the possibility of a coronavirus jumping from bats to people in 2007 because the last half dozen major outbreaks started in a similar fashion. Bats in China have dozens of different coronaviruses and the conditions in their rat markets are basically asking for trouble. But it was never based on direct evidence, only circumstantial. Hence why it's called the spillover theory. But days after major news outlets were speaking about this as indisputable facts, it was also revealed that the Wuhan Institute of Virology is not physically far from that particular market and is China's only level 4 laboratory, meaning they are the ones holding and researching the most dangerous pathogens in the world. As soon as the world learned about that, conspiracy theorists trying to defy the already dogmatic mainstream narrative connected the dots and started to sing their own gospel, which is that the virus was engineered by the Chinese and released on purpose. And then all this got washed over by political tensions between the US and China, how Trump was adamant about calling the virus the China virus and so on. So it seemed like everyone was pushing their own narrative, which is the perfect example of the boy who cried wolf. If you can trust your own leaders, you will trust anyone. But science is as clear as it can be about one thing. In a letter called The Proximal Origin of SARS-CoV-2, which was published by five of the world's top virologists, they state that their analysis clearly show that SARS-CoV-2 is not a laboratory construct or a purposefully manipulated virus. They agreed that the virus was not a deliberate weaponization of a previously known virus and that it had no obvious signs of lab manipulation. As I stated in the previous video, this clearly means that the virus, according to scientific consensus at the time, is not a Chinese-made chimera that they unleashed on the world to achieve global supremacy. And it's also likely that it wasn't a coronavirus sample simply escaping a level 4 laboratory, which is supposed to have the highest standards of biosafety. But I have to say, in the light of recent information, it's true we can't rule that one out. So let's talk about the lab leak theory. This specific Wuhan lab has the largest amount of coronavirus samples in the world, namely 22,000 samples and virus sequences, including 15,000 from bats. The researchers collected these in order to experiment with something called gain-of-function research. This is a controversial idea in the scientific community, basically means that they took these viruses that rarely cross from bats to humans and they engineered them to be more deadly and infectious to humans. Yeah. So why on earth would anyone do this? As the argument goes, this way scientists can be ahead of the curve and if they know which viruses are only a few amino acids tweaks 
Shy of disaster, you can learn how to stop them when they cause an outbreak. But the need for this kind of research is hotly debated because many deem them way too risky in case one of these pathogens would escape a lab. Before anyone goes wild with this, this was never a secret. The need for gain-of-function research is debated, but it's out in the open in the name of pandemic prevention. But it is our first red flag in the search for the origin of this virus. We have a laboratory with the largest stockpile of coronavirus samples in the world and researchers dedicated to making them more infectious to humans. All this right at the epicenter of our current pandemic. So what about the fact that we are talking about a level 4 laboratory that's supposed to have the highest international standards and parameters on conducting these researches, specifically to prevent a lab leak? Well, turns out, in 2018, American diplomats have alerted Washington that a Wuhan lab was not set up properly for a safe operation. Unfortunately, they got ignored, and when tensions rose between the US and China in 2018, these diplomats lost access to the lab. That's the second red flag. Okay, let's go deeper into the rabbit hole, shall we? In September 2019, the database of the Wuhan lab's coronavirus samples was taken offline, apparently due to cyber attacks. Then, according to previously undisclosed US intelligence report, in November of the same year, three researchers of the lab got hospitalized with symptoms similar to those caused by COVID-19. Keep in mind, this is still circumstantial evidence. Yes, it's very suspicious that the Wuhan lab was studying coronaviruses right at the epicenter of all this, but at the same time, scientists warned that 9 times out of 10, when there is a new outbreak, you will find a lab that will be working on these kinds of viruses already or nearby, simply because virology labs tend to specialize in the viruses around them. Now, while this is true for why the Wuhan lab specializes in something that's common in China, it sort of opens the door to a different question. If the spillover theory is true, why did the outbreak start in Wuhan? After all, the coronavirus samples in the Wuhan lab all came from the southern subtropical provinces where SARS originated too. Virus hunters were completely surprised to see a coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan, central China, where chances of coronavirus jumping from animals to humans are said to be unlikely. So here's the thing. China, or Bill Gates, creating a virus to usher a pandemic in order to take over the world is still a ludicrous and dangerous conspiracy theory that should be stomped out. But while historical patterns and early evidence from the Wuhan market still points in the direction that this is a result of China's wildlife trade, new information shows that the lab leak hypothesis is something that needs to be investigated. Unfortunately, people usually want clear-cut answers and they want them as soon as possible. And this lab leak hypothesis damaged the reputation of not just Dr. Fauci and alike, but the scientific community as well. The media were simply wrong to boil down the spillover hypothesis to being an undisputable fact in the early days of the pandemic. And the conspiracy theorists have nothing to celebrate. If you throw a hundred crazy ideas out there and one of them turns out to be not that crazy, that's not a good success rate. Moreover, the other side cannot do the same. Science is careful and soft-spoken. It doesn't sing anyone's gospel and it's not afraid to change in the light of new evidence. But when everyone else is yelling and nobody has the patience to go beyond the easy answers, science can seem unsure and hesitant. And Fauci's 180 turn can look cowardly, but it's actually bravery. Scientists are the only ones who can act in a truly accountable way here, because they very well know that the stakes are high. If we don't get to the bottom of what happened in Wuhan, we cannot stop it from happening again. And people on both sides who want to jump on connecting the dots too early just add to the shroud of fog that hides the truth. In the case of the origins of COVID-19, as thrilling as the lab leak theory sounds, the only certainty is that we don't have definitive evidence yet. So, our responsibility is to demand the truth and not create one for ourselves. Please, this time, let's try to keep the comments sane and informative. Thank you. If you like this video, please leave a comment and subscribe below. Also, please don't forget to tap the notification bell 
so you will get notified about all new videos. Thank you so much, in the name of the whole The Magical Futurist team.